Hello everybody, how are you? David DeFranco here from davidthefranco.com with another Ask Me Anything video. Now I believe this is only my third one and it's actually been a while since I did my last AMA video which is what, maybe a few weeks ago? Oh and real quick, you hear that? Yeah, they're doing construction on the port again so if you hear that in the background, I apologize. Question number one comes from Daniel J over at twitter.com slash jjdaniel1996. Daniel says, what are you most looking forward to on Christmas day of 2014? Everything, I mean, I love Christmas day. From the feeling of waking up on Christmas morning, and then going downstairs and seeing the big bang behind me, as well as the presents under the tree, the stockings, then waiting for my parents to come downstairs. Yes, I'm still the first one to wake up on Christmas day. And yes, I still wait for them to come downstairs before opening presents. Well, because it's a family event. I'm not gonna do it all myself. But besides that, just spending time with the family, doing all my first taste of the turkey, stuffing mashed potatoes on camera for you guys, and just enjoying the day. Christmas is the best day of the year, so I try to make the most of it. Next question comes from Jessica Quinones. Little fun fact, that's the same last name as my high school girlfriend. Coincidence? I'm just kidding, Jessica. I know you're married. Anyway, I just like to make things awkward. Jessica says, what's your favorite device that you own? This. Well, first of all, I should say I don't play favorites. You should know that. I mean, I don't like to play favorites because there's so many amazing things in this world. For instance, it's too easy to say my late 2013 Mac Pro. I mean, this thing has significantly helped my workflow. It allows me to have three monitors, be productive, all that good stuff. But I'm not gonna say that. So for now, I'll just say my iPad mini three in gold because it's my nosed Apple device and I am loving this thing. But is it my favorite? No, because I guess I really don't have one true favorite. Next question. Yeya Abal Mohsen over at twitter.com slash Yeya Eldem. I am so sorry. Anyway, he says, if you couldn't buy an iPhone, what phone would you use? Well, honestly, I'm a fan of Windows Phone and the whole Windows 8 UI, just as long as you're using it on a touch screen. Let me make that very clear. But in terms of like a desktop environment, it doesn't make much sense unless you're using it as like a home theater PC. But anyway, all I'm trying to say is I love Windows devices in general because I'm a big fan of that tiled interface, but it's the lack of apps is what turns me away the most. For instance, my friend Chris loves his Windows phone, but he rarely gets a download the newest and latest apps because, well, they're not usually available. So if I could not use my iPhone and I did not prefer to use a Windows Phone device, I would just use an Android device and it would probably be the OnePlus One. That seems to be pretty popular nowadays. But then again, take that with a grain of salt because I don't really know much about Android and honestly, I don't do much research on Android. I'm not ashamed to say that, it's just, it doesn't interest me all that much. I'm very happy with iOS and let's just say that. I like my iOS devices. Next question comes from Jason Marcus. What piece of technology would be the hardest to put down and not use for a whole year? Now you say put down. Do you mean in terms of mobile? If so, easily, this, my iPad mini. I love my iPad mini. It's my nightly device to just chill on my couch, sit back, relax, check Twitter, answer emails, go on my websites, all that good stuff. Now electronics in general, Definitely this thing right behind me. My late 2013 Mac Pro, I could not imagine not working on this thing nowadays. I mean, honestly, my 2006 Mac Pro gets by fairly well, but the fact that it's stuck on OS X Lion, that alone says a lot, and I'm just incredibly grateful to be future-proof for at least four or five years to come. And the next question comes from Connor Hughes. Connor says, what do you do with all of your old gaming consoles, Nintendo 64, Dreamcast, etc. Well, honestly, storage. My video game consoles go right into storage. For instance, I have, I think, two Xbox 360s in my basement. My PS3 is down there. My Dreamcast is down there somewhere. And at my parents' house, I have a bunch of older consoles there, including my Sega CD, Genesis, NES, Super Nintendo. I don't even know where that is, but it's somewhere. So basically, I keep everything in storage because I've said this in past videos, but in case you didn't watch that video, I plan to create the ultimate entertainment room one day where I would have all of my classic and modern video game consoles hooked up to all the compatible TVs that I have, my computers in that room, 
it would just be an ultimate like geeks dream come true. Now unfortunately that day is a long ways off because one, I don't have the room for it. Two, I don't have the money for it. And three, I need to find all those consoles and electronics. So long answer short, I keep them all. I refuse to sell my video game consoles and portables. Next question comes from Eric. Eric says, can you recall the moment when you realized that content creation would be your focus in life? Eric, this is a great question, but unfortunately I don't have a 100% accurate answer for you because I don't even know myself. Content creation, for as long as I could remember, has always been a passion of mine. And when you're passionate about something, you kind of just naturally fall into it in terms of calling it your career, calling it work, calling it your job. So I don't know. I've always loved creating things even before I knew about Apple or the internet. I have always loved the idea of selling things. For instance, I used to go around our neighborhood with my sister Kristen and our red wagon and I used to sell old toys for a dollar or two. So I guess I've kind of always had that entrepreneurial like spirit inside of me and that's the best way to explain it. So I hope that answers your question regardless. I don't know. I don't know. It kind of just happened. And the next question comes from Kai Valley Arts. Pretty cool logo. I like that. Simplicity is key. Kai says, if you do use Final Cut, why do you use it over Adobe's Premiere? This is another great question with actually an easy answer because I like Final Cut Pro 10. Adobe Premiere may be better in some people's eyes, but you could say the same thing about Final Cut Pro 10 users. For instance, they may say Final Cut Pro 10 is better than Premiere or maybe Sony Vegas is better than Premiere or Premiere is better than Vegas or some people even just prefer to use iMovie. Despite what some people may say, you can create professional style projects within iMovie. Never ever let anyone tell you otherwise. But for me, it just comes down to personal preference. I love Final Cut Pro 10. It's the software I've always wanted, especially considering I do own Final Cut Pro 7. Now actually, I've owned Final Cut Express. Yeah, but still, they were very similar and I could just never get the hang of it. I've created a couple of videos using Final Cut Express, but it, it was just never for me. The interface was ugly. And guys, honestly, that is something I love about Final Cut Pro 10. It works well and it looks nice. It looks modern because as you know, I like things that look nice and work well. Best of both worlds. Basically, I just can't use ugly software. I know that may seem like, what's the word? Not cocky of me, arrogant? I don't know, but I just can't use ugly software and I can't use ugly hardware. Simple as that. And the next question comes from Useful Cream. Hmm, I have to wonder, what are you using your cream for? Useful Cream says, thoughts on teens smoking weed and why you shouldn't waste your college education partying and why you personally don't smoke. Well, I'll start out by answering the second half of this question. Why I don't smoke? It's a nasty habit. Now, I'm not trying to offend anyone when I say this, but when I take an interest in a girl, and I find out that girl smokes, boom, interest obliterated. I don't think I've ever said obliterated in a video. But seriously, smoking is the number one turnoff in women for me. Now again, I don't mean that personally because some people don't mind. I just can't stand it. I don't wanna be around a girl that smokes. And people in general, if you smoke, I'm not trying to diss you. That may be your addiction and that's fine because I had my own unhealthy addictions, trust me. For instance, some people may argue, well, David, you drink twisted tea and take shots at parties and that's not good for your liver. I agree. Unfortunately, this world is filled with unhealthy addictions. But when it comes to smoking, I have proudly never ever smoked a cigarette. Now, in terms of weed, I will say this, I'm not totally against the idea of weed because if people want to have fun and as long as they're staying safe, then I see no problem with it because some people may argue that weed is technically safer than consuming alcohol. And that actually might be true. But in terms of what you said, wasting your college education, that I can't agree with all that much because I've had my party nights in college, not in terms of smoking weed, but drinking. And trust me, I've had my nights where I drank a lot and I never really regretted it because I was having fun. I was living the college life. And honestly, college opened me up in terms of social interaction because in general, before college, 
I was always kind of like to myself, more of a shy person. And while college opened me up and allowed me to meet new people, meet new girls, obviously, college, come on, it's gonna happen. So I don't think consuming alcohol and smoking weed is necessarily a bad thing if you're in college, because I don't think that's wasting your education. Just as long as you're doing your studies properly, you're getting good grades, you're showing up to class, and you're not wasting your education away for real, that I see no problem with letting loose. Now I realize those comments are gonna make some people mad, but that's how I feel. Life is all about having fun, making mistakes, learning from those mistakes, and taking responsibility. And if you think you're perfect, you're not. Because trust me, you have imperfections, just like me, just like the next person, and that person, and so on and so forth. Well, that answer actually went a little deeper than I thought it would, but hey, interesting regardless. Xeron X Santa X says, what are your YouTube plans for 2015? Well, let's just say this. Starting out 2015 is going to be huge because I will be documenting on YouTube my first trip ever to Las Vegas for CES 2015. It is going to be an awesome time and I plan to record an entire week's worth of vlogs. So if you like vlogs, you like technology, you like my family's funny moments, my moments with my friends and whatever, expect good times. I can promise you it's going to be one of my best weeks on YouTube ever. So that's just the beginning of 2015, but sometime soon after that, I definitely want to finally upgrade my camcorder. I've been looking at the Canon Vixia G20. It looks like an awesome camera. It's $900, which definitely is not cheap, but still, I am making it a goal of mine to get my hands on that camcorder soon after CES. Because my Panasonic HEC SC600K is a great camcorder, but I got it like three or four years ago, and it's definitely beginning to show its age. And then beyond that, expect all the usual videos, maybe even higher quality vlogs, thanks to the new Canon camera that I'll be getting. And well, anything else that comes along the way. That's what's great about YouTube. I could upload a video next week that I never expected to upload this week. You just never know what's gonna happen, and YouTube gives you the freedom to do what you want, and I love that. Spartan Parker says, what motivates you? Living my dream. Making money doing what I love. And that's this, content creation. I love creating content, whether it's video content, website content, blogging content, anything. I love creating content and sharing it for free and getting paid in return. I am so freaking passionate about that I cannot even express how much I love it. I love the idea of selling products via affiliate marketing, products that I, of course, use myself, I love just putting out videos five times a week on YouTube and never knowing who will come across my channel. Because believe me, I made some great friends thanks to YouTube that I never would have met to begin with. And for that, I'm incredibly grateful. And then there's everything else. I mean, I just love creating content and that's honestly what motivates me. I wanna be successful and I wanna look back on this day like 10, 20 years from now and say, wow, I've certainly grown a lot. Next question comes from Nathan Franks. If you owned a time-traveling DeLorean, what time period would you go to? Definitely the era of the dinosaurs. Just as long as I could bring my camcorder. I mean, I would kill to see dinosaurs in person. That's why I love the idea of Jurassic Park, Godzilla, and anything else that relates. It just really sucks that dinosaurs are no longer around. And yes, I do mean that. I would love to have dinosaurs roaming the earth just as long as they were within a controlled environment. I wouldn't want people dying left and right, which is what eventually happens in Jurassic Park. But still, I love dinosaurs. I love the idea of seeing dinosaurs in real life. So that's exactly where I would go. Millions upon millions of years back. Jean-Pierre Tycho says, are you going to CES 2015? Yes, I am. Dan Smith, how do you come up with website projects such as Brand Rockets and Squarespace? Summit. Well, Brand Rocket is not really a fresh idea. I just love branding and I wanted to do something focused around branding and giving away free content and hopefully getting paid in return through affiliate marketing, maybe advertising eventually, but as of today, Brand Rocket is proudly ad free and I just love that. But in terms of Squarespace Summit, that was definitely a more focused niche or niche, but technically niche for us Americans. Yes, I've looked that up. Squarespace Summit basically delivers tutorials to those looking for such tutorials and content and walkthroughs and all that good stuff. So basically, when you need to create a website, 
think of problems that exist and just think of how you can answer those problems from other people. For instance, if somebody's looking for Squarespace 7 tutorials, why not use Squarespace Summit? And my SEO should be pretty good. Search engine optimization, I should say. I just kind of assume SEO is a basic thing to everyone, but it's not. So SEO means search engine optimization. And that basically determines how you rank on search engines like Google, Bing, Yahoo. Although I believe Yahoo is powered by Bing. Or is it the other way around? But you get my point. You just need to create quality content and well, make sure that content is stuff that people are actually looking for. For example, Squarespace Summit currently features tutorials focused around Squarespace 6, but Squarespace 7 will be forced, maybe by the time you view this video, for all users. So basically, most of the content on Squarespace Summit is suddenly irrelevant, which kind of sucks, but that comes along with content creation. You need to evolve, and well, you just can't sit still. You need to constantly be motivated to be new, be fresh, be original. So with that said, Squarespace Summit will soon have Squarespace 7-centric tutorials in probably early 2015 by February or by as late as March. So I hope that answers your question, Dan. All right, guys, there you go. Another insanely successful Ask Me Anything video. I love answering your guys' questions. And even if that means I have constant booms in the background, that's why I've done a lot of cuts in this edit. But what can you do that comes along with the territory of creating content on YouTube? And I love it. It's never the same each and every day. So guys, that's it. If you wanna be a part of my next Ask Me Anything series, be sure to follow me on Twitter and Facebook, those links are right below. As well as maybe Instagram, I've yet to actually take questions in using that platform, so perhaps soon. But of course, that link is also right below for your convenience. Guys, thank you so much, your support means a lot to me, and I'll see you in my next video. Peace. Can you even hear that? probably can.